Hi, this is Toby from Terraset Technologies, and I uh, just want to talk about PackML. What is PackML? Well, it's Packaging Machine Language, um, and what you have before you is the typical OMAC uh, state chart. And if you want to have a resource, then you can always go download a copy yourself at omac.org at PackML. They have all these implementation guides, um, resources, and they go through the history of it. Um, and if you look at PackML online, you know, you'll find Rockwell Automation, Emerson, uh, Bosch, Mitsubishi. A lot of people already have um, libraries that are set up for PackML. And what, what I'm trying to encourage is, you know, basic state machines. So you don't have to do everything that they have in here, but at least take a PackML concept and make it, you know, tailor it to your machine. You know, because if we break this down, you know, we got stopped, idle, suspended, hold, completed, and aborted. So all of those are like in between states for the basic stuff that we normally do, which would be stop, start, they're calling it execute, and then when something is completed, then you go through the cycle again. Well, when you're in the execution phase, you know, when you're doing this, you may have to hold or you may have to suspend. And we're typically doing that right now with, uh, how do you call it? Like with alarming or interlocks or, you know, hold would be like, is my conveyor empty? Yeah, my conveyor is empty, so just hang on a minute. So in that case, you know, you come out, you have your regular runtime program. Probably drawing it backwards, maybe say we're, you know, we're cycling through in the PLC with the main or, or whatever your main, your, uh, whatever your main routine is, whether you call it main or whether it's just, you know, a hundred millisecond cycle or whatever, you know, and say you get to, I don't know, step five and you're looking for product coming in on the assembly line and it's not there. So at that point you want to break out of this routine and go over to routine B, which would be like your idle, or we could just call it your idle routine and, and hang out in here until that state changes again. So my thought is how do you break this down so that you can simplify it so that you can use it for your world um, and, and not get hung up on everything that OMAC talks about or the complexity that you see in here. You know, same thing with when, when you do an abort. Um, you know, say that there's a fault and you got to get out of the cycle and then you're starting over so you're going to clear it. Um, or say you just want to stop, open up the fence, get in, pull out whatever's jamming the machine and then reset it set it back to idle and then start it up again. You know, those, those are things that happen every day. And if we write our code properly, then the machine should be able to recover and, and go back to where it was. You know, why is this important? It's important because we are becoming more data dependent or data heavy. So um, where you will find PackML is with food, pharmacy, any, anybody that's wanting to, to have traceability and to make sure that they got that data feedback coming through, um, they're, they're wanting this kind of organization. The other thing is that it allows us to take a frame, you know, a framework up, um, for instance, like picture that you got code here in machine one, but your line is actually machine one, two, three, four, five. Well, we don't have an abundancy of controls engineers, so if you can write your software so that the structure or the framing is the same, 
And so that each of these machines behave similarly, and I say similarly because even though we try to copy and paste and make machines act the same way, it's very difficult to do. Um, but you can still have these states here that, that we're talking about. You know, you, and I broke it out into these just to simplify. So like if you don't get the middle ones for a minute and you just concentrate on uh, stopped to resetting to idle to here, execute, completing, and then complete. So if I was building a machine today, I wouldn't try to do all of this at once. You, you would be like, I mean, this can be very overwhelming. So you break it down and you say, what do I have to do? Or what is my state when I'm stopped? You know, obviously we don't have control power. Uh, we may have alarms. Uh, none of our interlocks are made, you know, at that point, you know, and we haven't, we haven't hit the start button. So we are in a stopped state. So some of these things would come in as reset, you know, so if we clear our interlocks, clear our alarms, um, and set the machine up so that it's ready to go, are we reset? Yep. Okay. Then we go to idle. You know, at that point, we may or may not be able to start the machine because um, maybe we don't have product. You know, so if I start the machine, push button start, and I come over here to starting, and then I go through my code and I get right here and I say, do I have product? And it's a no. And then I'm going to loop back to idle, and then I should hang out in here until I get product and then go back to starting. But I shouldn't have to come through and, and restart physically. You know, the, the, the machine should be like in a hold state. And that's where you got to transition from the difference between idle and hold. And that's where the complexity comes in. Because some people may see lack of product as idle. Other people may see it as a hold. But say my operator He's already hit the start button and he's waiting on product. Then, then we're doing this, you know, or maybe that direction. Yeah. You know, so right now we would go into a hold or suspended because we're waiting on product. And then we don't have to come back over here and physically start the machine again. And those are things that you have to consider in design and lay out your framework properly. And what I find with PackML, when people execute it or when they build it, um, they get fancy with the library, they make it too complicated, and they don't have transitions out of these guys that are very well. It, 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 it gets hokey-dory. Um, because, <laughs> and it's not easy, so I can talk all day, but it doesn't mean that I'm perfect at it either. Um, but if you come over here and you got your machines, right? Um, say machine one goes, or say machine three goes into a holding pattern because he's waiting on machine one and two to finish. Well, these guys have to communicate down the line and then it also has to communicate back that way. So that's why PackML has, um, has overlying, uh, structures. So like, there would be a framework for the whole line. And then you call these units or machines. And then actually I, they call this whole thing a unit. And then you can break this down to equipment. But that's where the creativity can come into because you can name it whatever you can name it whatever you got going on. The thing is, is, is to create a structure that you can repeat and that you understand within your company um, and that you can train on well. So, but the typical nomenclature is a unit is an entire machine. So that would be this whole thing. Um, equipment mod 
would be each one. And then you'll have a control module in here within each of the equipment mods. And these will be different depending on what the functionality of the machines are. And then state commands are going to be the same as far as going back to you know, going back to, to these states here. You know, you want stop, start, hold, idle, complete, aborted. You want all of those to be commands and then mode status um, would be whatever your communication setup is for these guys to go back and forth because they, they have to communicate with what they're doing um, for the whole thing to work as a machine. And then on a different level of code, you may have, you know, transfer back and forth for your historian data and taking these states so that people can trace back what happened and then also knowing where your product is and what your work in progress is. So that's where the traceability comes into. Um, and that's something to consider for the, for the structure. So am I a huge fan of PacML? I think it can be overly complicated, but I'm a fan of structured code. And these are the, you know, PacML is one of the oldest structures that we have, um, you know, and, and we should be able to create code to that kind of functionality um, and then repeat it so that we can code faster because that's one of the major complaints with integration and building machines is, you know, if I get into this machine, that PLC code is different than this one. Well, it shouldn't be. There's no reason that it should be. Because um, you have the same same repeatable things going on as far as like modes, mode of operation, but your functionality or your control module may change uh, based on the functionality of machine five. However, you know, the start, stop, fault, that kind of thing should respond the same way throughout the whole line. So that's the benefit of PacML. Um, this is very brief. I'm working on some other stuff to try to show it in code. Um, there are libraries out there that you can pull up online. And then, as I said, if you consider going to OMAC, um, they have the baseline for it. So they're the people that made it up. They're the, they're the experts is what I would say. So, all right. Thanks. Bye.